So I want to ask, like, all right, if you were to give somebody, right, you've got a million followers, I've got a million followers, I want to ask your advice. How can you get a million followers? Well, <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another video. And this is going to be a different video because it's going to be a podcast uh, where I'm going to be talking to different content creators, artists. And today we're joined by Jadokar, a content creator duo. They have both recently blown up extraordinarily on social media on tiktok instagram and youtube and i invited them to share their perspective on things and give general advice for upcoming content creators in case you might want to pursue this and also if you're an artist i'm sure this will be a very very interesting uh, podcast for you so just relax this is for you to just live in the background and hopefully enjoy and stick around to the very end where we'll really dive deep into some really interesting stuff so where are you where are you guys from we're from uh georgia technically uh both of our parents are georgian mm -hmm. and georgia is it's not the state it's the small country between europe and asia it's uh, uh mm -hmm. bordering armenia as you mentioned earlier you just visited it armenia turkey azerbaijan and russia and how do you guys know english english we, uh, we well <laughs> We lived in Latvia for a while, and uh, both me and David picked up uh, like really well the English accent and skills. Because the school that we went to, we were taught three languages on the same sort of like mother tongue kind of level. It was, so it was English, Russian, and Latvian. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, neither of us remember Latvian that well because yeah, yeah. yeah, we didn't practice. Like once we moved back to Georgia, there was no Latvian people for us to like practice. Yeah, that. there was no reason to speak Latvian. So. Uh, English as well. So yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Because yeah, your English is pretty good, and then a lot of people will not really think that you're from around thank there. You, thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, same with you too. As you just mentioned earlier, you said that you kind of grew up yeah. speaking English, right? Yeah. This is completely off camera, but we talked a little bit about, uh, yeah, where we're from. And yeah, I lived in Spain basically all my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I know English because my parents uh, speak in English. My mom is Chinese and my dad is Nigerian. So we basically speak in English at home. And in a way, I taught myself to speak like this because... I don't know, the English they speak is kind of broken. It's uh, <laughs> African English. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... It's not it's not an accent that everybody understands. So I kind of, in a way, taught myself because also whenever I speak that kind of English with people, they don't really understand it in a way because I also speak really quickly and it's kind of, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just learned to speak in a more n sort of neutral accent, more American, I guess, because mm. most people understand it. Um, and yeah, that's how I that's how I know English, and that's how that's why I speak like this. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people think that I'm from like the U.S., but I've never been to the U.S. in my life. <laughs> that's my. Not that's about day. to change really soon. <laughs> <laughs> what with our success yeah, most and everything. <laughs> <laughs> most likely, most likely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, oh. hopefully someday. Yeah, it's some, something to talk about as well. Like we we both started growing really quickly, and we're both in a way success like successful now and um i'm just wondering like how how do you f feel about all this like you know like this whole all, all of a sudden blew it growing <laughs> up type thing you know because i'm interested because i don't i don't think i've asked this to people you know because uh, yeah, yeah i don't yeah. have a lot of people who who've experienced this so how do you feel about it well uh, yeah i mean i think uh, the biggest shock for us was uh when we hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. We were screaming at the top of our lungs because we never saw these wow. kinds of numbers. Like when once we started, like we and we talked uh, off camera as well, like how just at some point you decided, okay, I gotta like restart my whole game plan and dedicate myself in this short format uh, uh, and kind of see how I can succeed in that. And you did, and we would want to hear from your side as well. But from our side, like the mm -hmm. we try, we also had like a number of attempts of trying to like publish our work. Uh, we did like long format music clips on uh, YouTube. Nobody cared. Yeah, we did also a comic <laughs> series. Yeah, exactly. Wine. Nobody, nah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. It, like <laughs> uh, no, I get you. I yeah, get yeah, you. yeah. Most likes we've got, I think, was or yeah, like hundred or two hundred or like five. 100 maybe i honestly can't remember yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and once like now recently when we started to like reach these numbers oh my god we have ten thousand views oh my god we have no no sorry what not 10 well first it was like a thousand views out of nowhere then ten thousand then 
oh my god and oh my god and but and, yeah just to kind of like see that ten thousand people are interested to see what you're doing uh, and since that point yeah. uh, it was so hard to understand like first hundred thousand like five hundred thousand yeah, million and the, you're like it's it's so difficult to comprehend these, these numbers, numbers are really. abstract yeah, yeah. It's, it's a population yeah. of a country it's it's, <laughs> it's crazy so i we, yeah. we don't yeah like uh we are very grateful for the for this sort of reception mm -hmm. and this this sort of attention but yeah it's not something that we like this wasn't uh necessarily something that we were like aiming for like we want immediately or at, at a certain deadline this amount of people is just like happened and it's super surreal yeah. and yeah. We, that kind of like this sort of attention what it changed was like my outlook towards uh, like personally in regards to the work every time i'm now trying to like almost a kind of outdo myself i feel a certain kind of a pressure but it's not too much i don't like burn out hopefully i don't get to that because i had like mm -hmm. other experiences prior to this but yeah it's yeah it's so, so I, w I want to hear f from your side as well. Like, how, 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 do, how does it feel? From my side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How does it feel? Well, it's... I don't know. In the beginning, it was kind of a rush. I feel like, mm -hmm. oh, like you know, I feel, it feels good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But it gets to a point where, I don't know, you kind of get used to it, mm. you know? And, yeah, I'm, I'm obviously very grateful, but it gets to a point where it's just numbers at this point, and it's like, okay. Yeah. Um, But... Yeah, it's it's amazing, and it's definitely changed my life, um, mm -hmm. hundred percent, and I'm grateful for it. Um, and yeah, it's always it's what I've always wanted, you know, because we've talked about this before. But I've I started creating videos when I was in high school, yeah, <laughs> when I was like yeah. fifteen, sixteen, yeah. and nothing worked. Just like you guys, like I tried a lot of different things, like mm -hmm. so many. Like if you go to my YouTube channel, <laughs> all the kind of content that I make. Seriously, you wouldn't even know. Like, I've made so many things. Um, nothing worked. Um, but then, yeah, one day, all of a sudden, blowing up. It's I'm, I'm grateful as well that it happened like this, you know. Everybody gets success differently. And, you know, it, it's easy to feel bad if you're starting out and nobody's watching you for mm -hmm. a long time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, 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 a lot of times you never know how you're going to, how you're going to get you know successful and it might take some years you might some people blow up instantly mm -hmm. you know it's their luck but i'm just saying like everybody's situation is differently so yeah i'm also grateful that it took me this long so it took me i, t I made hundreds of videos i would say hundreds even thousands maybe <laughs> not maybe not the thousands but it kind of helped me to learn you know Definitely. Uh, learn how to make videos learn how to be a content creator um so I'm glad things worked out the way they did. So Absolutely. just for anybody out there who is starting out, you know, just know that it'll it'll happen. If you really want it bad enough, it will happen at some point. You yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, um, for sure, for sure. Oh, just to add to it, like, uh, yeah, like David uh, and I, what prompted us to like what, what you said, like at some point that you said, that, OK, I want to restart this whole approach uh, toward, towards my content creation and see what I can do like with this short format content, right? Same mm -hmm. thing was for us as well, because after trying all and through all this trial and error, uh, potentially speaking, yeah, we might have succeeded like uh, in the span of like several years, maybe just like how Mr. Beast's first 100 videos were absolute right. trash and he speaks about it very candidly. And it took him also like many years to like figure out through trial and error what works and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, so we didn't take that route. Right. Uh, we said, okay, just let, out of curiosity, let's look what is like popular on uh, short format like uh, social media platforms in this genre in in art. Mm -hmm. And when once we looked at the tutorials, once we looked at you know, looked at things with the experience that David has, with the kind of experience in art and design and what I have, we were like, well, if people can do this, like why can't we? do this as well and so we just and it was one thing that was super like uh useful and made our life kind of easier compared to us generating like long format content we we could dedicate less time but not in a bad way it's just uh, two very different like for uh, doing shorts you mean 
Yeah, long format video. You spend oh, yeah, like yeah. three or five days, maybe perhaps, like filming something, depending on what you're yeah. doing. Then editing all of exactly. that. Yeah, it's crazy. So one video a week is even that is like a huge, you know, dedication, like in terms of right. time. Yeah. But with these short format videos, we were pumping up like one or two videos a day at first, and they weren't like well, yeah, at first they were bad, but. But we learned like a lot, and we've adjusted our editing, our pacing. But still, your your videos are, I mean, yeah, you they're quick and stuff. But I feel like they take time because I feel like they're also planned out and scripted, and you have to come up with ideas and sure. stuff like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In my case, it's so much different. Like, all I do is check people's comments and do their drawings. Oh, and the exact, one way it's the exact same you format. You still take time you know? to like come up with the designs and everything. Yeah, I would say like oh, what, guess, you, what you're thinking and also the drawing process. I, I know what you're saying. You, you, you script less in terms of like text mint perhaps right. like what you say. But I'm, I know for a fact like what your drawing takes time. Like that's, that's also still. It, is, it depends uh, on the drawing, yes. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Obviously, of course, of course. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a this is an incredible like format that mm -hmm. allowed us to. I think that was the key mo factor that allowed us to achieve this. A key motivation because like we could actually generate a lot of videos and yeah, keep up with it and uh, have yeah. the consistency. So if anyone like as as watching us right now who want to try doing content creation, just why not try this short format as well alongside with your like long format ideas and see see what happens. This this might shock you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. What are your ultimate goals? Like, do you want to continue just making short form or? Oh man, let me what? tell you, listen. <laughs> uh, we, we have some major plans. I know, I, I like, dude, the, yeah. the, the kind of, well, here's the thing. I, I, me and David both look at someone like Mr. Beast and uh, he is a very like unique person, but his content, like I understand completely why the Mr. Beastification phenomena happened because people just look at him and his success and his numbers and people try to copy exactly what he does to almost yeah. to a T. Sure, that's fine. Yeah. And he like Mr. Beast says as much like that's whatever. It, yeah. it still kind of directs attention towards back to him. But that right. sort of uh, amount of like influence and like the freedom that he this guy has to build an entire set of like squid games set and recreate the entire game mm -hmm. for instance right if that is possible for content creators why like we are hoping that uh, with our like approach and dedication that maybe we'll, like for instance one of our ideas is to in like make a uh, art symposium event where we can like invite artists from from around the globe and like make make a art is installation that can span over like a week or more yeah, one of the like uh, main things uh, with what you're saying is that uh, uh, the community of artists that we have in georgia is uh, there are a lot of very nice people but uh, the country itself uh, doesn't really support artists but uh, and it, because of yeah. that like it's very hard for a lot of people to achieve anything and the same situation was with, was with us yeah but to be more specific like what because it, uh, georgia in and of itself is so small and the, the the uh, um, the portion of the population who is interested in art and who's like who is interested in art just period is even smaller and the portion of the within that portion that is willing to pay for art is even a fraction smaller yeah, yeah because yeah. yeah you need to be like what well, you know rich enough or well to do enough in terms of financial mm -hmm. means to afford yourself an a bonus Pe people barely are able to like pay for rent and their bills here like mo most right. like the majority of the population so in countries like the states or something or or even within europe there are like it, it it is more or less possible for artists to thrive nowadays especially everyone is like still digital but yeah like the kind of plans that we have is to help perhaps like or yeah help the uh, younger artists or artists who are like have been trying to succeed but ha haven't necessarily done so well mm -hmm. like to have them participate sort of, uh, in our kind platform. of build a community of yeah, yeah, yeah. have them can... participate in our platform yeah. in some form or yes there's like many kind of plan plans or that's, ideas that we yeah, have that's amazing yeah, what about you that's really cool what do you have planned? um i i would love to like get into like really ambitious projects mm -hmm. like as i said like i'm i'm a long format person and yeah. i I just love creating, I don't know, films, documentaries, mm -hmm. stuff like this. Mm -hmm. You guys, I feel like you're more on the artistic side, right? You're you're looking at it more in the art community. But I have like two different 
person not personality but like mm -hmm. in a way like the the person who makes the videos mm -hmm. right and the person that like the artist right mm -hmm. um I, i feel like i'm more of the filmmaking type person mm -hmm. right um projects and stuff like this art i mean art being completely honest i kind of felt off like i was i'm not as passionate about art as i was a few months ago like a few years ago mm. and i didn't want to continue doing it for a living um but you know i got to a point where I'm, i was like you know i'm good at drawing i know i'm not super passionate about it but i'm good at it and i'm sure people will love to 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 watch me draw so that's why i decided to continue doing drawing uh content mm -hmm. but At the same time, I'm just I I want to create I want to create films I want to create documentaries I want to create really ambitious big you know type mm. things I'm kind of like both of you in one person <laughs> yeah kind of yeah. you know <laughs> yeah pretty much but yeah which is interesting yeah we we talked about this a little bit but you guys you you're both jadokar right like you're both kind of like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah, yeah. Entity, I guess. Yeah. Um, the entity, um, and exactly. what do you guys do? Like, what do you, each of you, add to the whole thing? You know. Well, you begin, because well, I, I draw for now. That's the most that we've done so far in terms of like art creation. But like David, you do. Uh, well, uh, as we said, like in past, we've been trying to do all kinds of things, and um, for like many years, we we've been trying to come up but it's something like together like uh, we put our minds to it and maybe it was something drawing related or something like film related and with this Jadokar um, I was specifically watching and trying to understand how social media platforms worked and how all these like uh, audience psychologies uh, were kind of working with the different content creators and uh, at some point when both me and Soso are feeling like we, we got to do something we got to create something We both sat down and we came up with this idea and uh, mainly what I do is uh, I manage the account. I think about like the future prospects of how we can manage our content and what kind of videos we'll be doing and uh, also like sort of the what I'm saying like all of those things are also done by Soso because it's not something like the only thing that is done by just one person is uh, Uh, drawing and filming like if we film I film with the camera if yeah. uh, we draw so also draws but everything else is mm -hmm. kind of like mashed up together so I take time to like okay. respond to people and talk with them and kind of understand our community so that we could like okay. build a better engagement uh, same with like uh, mm -hmm. as I said like for example understanding how like for example if I see that we are on the wave of viral videos I try to study that and understand like what worked for it like what kind of details we can like repeat in the next videos that wouldn't okay. seem to be like similar but would help us to grow those videos as well so more of a technical side on me uh, plus like uh, coming up with some of the scripts for the videos yeah, and, yeah. so uh, you're also involved in uh, mm -hmm. ideas when, when i hit a certain like art block in terms of this particular <laughs> yeah I, i ran out of how to's I, i've i've already like did everything about clothing i did about the perspective what else and, and david's like <laughs> do some like you know cars or whatever and ah oh, yes okay or, or, well, so, or something this, the funny thing which we didn't completely didn't expect was uh, i was working at the time and, yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so also needed to film that day something because we were posting every day at that time and uh he calls me at my job and asks me like oh, okay, i have no idea what to draw like well, what should we draw and i'm sitting there meanwhile trying to hide my phone so that, like people wouldn't see yeah because uh, i work at the film set so it's not really nice to be on the phone around there and uh i just quickly come up with that idea like let's draw things that don't exist but we desperately need and the first thing that came to sosa was Hard filtering uh, underwear <laughs> yeah <laughs> just the most stupid <laughs> I idea uh, but Which, it yeah blow up and blew up and uh but yeah, yeah. we are also the thing is yeah. people r love ridiculous stuff like they funny, do like things that don't make sense so yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. I well mean, even like with some of your most popular characters like if you look at the characters it's just so ridiculous <laughs> but so funny to watch how it's being created jack sparrow as a sparrow or yeah, like yeah, Mr. Bean yeah. as a bean yeah, yeah, yeah that's that that's what grabs attention yeah. as well and it's like people yeah, normally yeah. don't think about these kinds of things so, although like when asked like they might come up with but it's like the, the the fact that you have the power to visualize it like so clearly that that's what's striking so yeah mm -hmm. But yeah, Soso -so is the master behind the pencil and the pen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm, hmm. the, I'm the artist. And you're more of the content creator. 
right? Like you're kind of like the image, I guess, because if I think of Jadakar, I think of Soso. I don't think of David because, you know, you're not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of like behind the scenes. You know? Sure, sure, sure. That 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 is how it is uh, at the moment. It, uh, it, yeah, because I'm I'm the one with like the kind of skills that is able to show uh, something like a product now. Like one of the okay. new videos that we're making uh, uh, early on, or we I don't know when this is going to be published. Maybe it's going to be published around the same time where we're going to publish the video. But I I made a like a city out of a sandstone. I work with a drill bit. I, anything that I can grab my hands, I can pretty much work with. So it's it's a very effective like thing to see. That's what people can see. But David, what he does in terms of filming, in terms of being behind the camera, that's oftentimes people don't realize how much work goes into that. So uh, yeah, we try to incorporate. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we try to incorporate his face as well in, 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 within this content. But yeah, David's skills are in a different kind of field like the expertise that he has in terms of not only just filming but directing lighting editing these are like yeah and he finished the uh, film school yeah, yeah, yeah. and his ambition mm -hmm. is to direct uh, as well and i'm pretty sure somewhere down the line jadokar is also going to introduce like short movies <laughs> yeah, yeah I, dude I, for sure for no, sure that's true that's true that's, yeah so for now for now it's like with the setup that we have and with the kind of production level that we have yeah it's mm -hmm. for for now i'm the face at the moment because that's what people see most mm -hmm. of the time i'm the one that produces yeah plus if it's runs. just two people like uh, you can't just I, I wouldn't put the camera on the tripod and just stand in the frame with a, like a <laughs> static shot. Like at at some point, once we're gonna hire someone to film our videos, like at that point, those type of videos will have a different different kind of approach where we'll we both will be kind of included in the video and because yeah. it's it's nice mm -hmm. to show how we do these things because as I said, like everything we do, we communicate between each other. Nothing uh -huh. is done by just one person except like the physical things that we see. Sure. So that mm -hmm. way, like it's more fun to see these reactions. Yeah. That's really good. But as you I mentioned, did. you basically do both of those things just <laughs> by yourself. Which You're a one I man army. <laughs> I can't imagine like how, because like even just framing like a camera, you, you, you probably yeah, have yeah, a monitor yeah. to like see uh, yourself, but still like it's, you gotta Actually, check it. Right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yes. I see myself. It's on the phone, so I can, yeah. But then again, like, but, uh, if you want to like fix something, you have to go to the camera, fix it, come back, and it's, I, uh, yeah, I can't imagine. That. He relates. That's... He knows. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> unaware of that. Like, I know how to work a camera, but like, I don't even want to touch it. Like, it's, it's so precarious. Yeah, I get it. See, the thing about me is that I know what it takes to be a content creator, right? Mm -hmm. I know what you need to know. So, I've kind of learned to do all of this like making videos recording editing um all of it all everything that requires to make videos so um yeah so all of my content creation content creation journey i kind of you know went really in depth into every part of this of, of what it takes mm -hmm. and just completely hammered at the skill um so in a way I've kind of I'm good at what whatever it is that that I need to you know do as a, to make videos. Yeah. So that's I guess another another reason why I guess things worked out the way they did cuz they're in a way good cuz it took me a really long time to kind of master all of this. Now I'm the ultimate content creator i guess <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome dude no yeah, yeah, yeah but it's it's really amazing that you guys are two different you know beings i guess like yeah. not one person because and you know working together as well it's it's uh i feel like it's good because it you can't do this alone as much as i'm doing this alone like seriously like content creation no, is so hard almost and impossible, you, you, it's, yeah. you need a whole team to oh, yeah. to do this properly Mm -hmm. And I completely understand, but yeah, I, in the beginning you just have to do this on on your own. Nobody's gonna back you up. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or so you're super lucky. It's really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What you're yeah. Saying. Or you might be. Unless very you have lucky. a brother who. It, <laughs> who exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Who is stupid uh, enough to go along with all your crazy <laughs> ideas? Yes. But yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're pretty much alone at. But that, most that, people, that. yeah, most people will go this alone, and mm -hmm. yeah. So you said you you studied film. You went to film school, but you you studied. Did you what do you go? Did you uh, go to art school. 
I first went to the design school in Eindhoven in Holland. Then I almost had a nervous breakdown and I uh, <laughs> took a year off. And while they, taking a year off, I decided to completely switch my professions and study a field that is even harder, which is architecture. <laughs> but I was like, you know, uh, because I don't know. like yeah. Never enough. No, no, no. But it, why stop here? <laughs> sure, sure, whatever. I, I studied and finished bachelor's degree here in Georgia. Uh, and uh, okay. after that... Unfortunately, I got really disheartened by the reality of architecture because no matter where you are, unless you are super rich with mm -hmm. amazing networks and if you finish like the top school, you don't get this like the kind of creative freedom that a lot of like young architect students dream of in terms of creating like, you know, wonderful projects. Most of the times you end up in a, in a in a yeah. studio Office setting yeah, 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 yeah. Where, where you have to do technical drawings and everything so yeah, mm. yeah, yeah and from there once i finished it i just like went from project to project i did comic books i did like mm -hmm. some book illustrations i uh, then i started to work for storyboard uh, uh, frame illustrations and now mm -hmm. like I, i've ended up here finally doing doing <laughs> what right. i've done since my childhood which is drawing essentially mm -hmm. just drawing the interesting thing about architecture is that I, I actually wanted to study that oh. <laughs> at some point. Okay, okay. But not really because I want to build things, but mm. mainly because I love landscapes and I love buildings and just to draw them and to create them. Yeah, so I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. that would be an interesting skill to D to learn. That's what well, that's what architecture is all about, yeah, in my yeah. opinion, f f matching the human made man made structures with landscape and how you can either reflect it or how you can juxtapose mm. it i have my own opinions about architecture i mostly lean towards like regional architecture uh, because it's more interesting for me to see how architects can reflect and merge with the landscape and uh, bring out some of the like qualities of that particular landscape into mm. like a man made structure of how that interpretation then occurs rather than mm. like sticking a glass box in the middle of like a you know Scandinavian forest which is it might look interesting but to me it there's so much dissonance yeah. it's it's like yeah that's not what i find like uh, yeah, cool about anymore, architecture yeah. yeah what you're saying exactly is what why what the reason also i wanted to mm -hmm. try architecture is how you can cool. yeah merge these man made structures with a landscape yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah me mainly because um again like i love to make films and i love to kind of design stuff for either films or video games so um at one point, I wanted to be like a concept artist, like making, mm. um, you know, landscapes for for films and, and stuff like this. Um, so that's why I thought maybe, you know, studying architecture might be an interesting, mm -hmm. an interesting path that I could take. But I didn't go. I just went to a regular art college. Ah, uh, so yeah, <laughs> you you went to an yeah. art college, like specifically with all the fine arts training and yeah. everything. Yeah, basically fine arts, uh, mm. focused on design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but this brings me to my next topic. Do you guys think that um, you know, you need to study art or go to art school to be a successful artist? Okay, I think I have to answer this. Uh, well. <laughs> um, I, I, it would be very disingenuous of me to say that you don't need it at all, because uh, mm -hmm. technically, if you, it depends on what you want to do. Let's say, let's let's say, say uh, so. If if you mm -hmm. want to be a content creator, technically you don't need to, because like look at what uh, uh, you know, one of the most successful uh, cartoonists have managed to accomplish. But that's content creation, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so I, I'm saying, like, yeah, depending on what kind of field you want to go mm -hmm. into. But even there, uh, like, let's say if you want to be an animator, right? People like uh, Pendleton Ward or uh, uh, the guys who created uh, Dan Harmon and uh, Justin Roiland mm -hmm. uh, creating, like, Rick and Morty. Nothing about those drawings is, like, academic right. per se. But I'm not saying that you shouldn't. Going to an art school or going to a design school or an architectural school can, in like, you can learn so many invaluable skills that no matter how many tutorials you look at no matter like how many how much time you spend on the internet like trying to learn and mm -hmm. absorb, absorb as much knowledge as you want it's a whole other thing when you are given an assignment mm -hmm. then you have to come to a class work on that assignment together with people or like with uh, like real like materials and everything i don't think a lot of people know like how much goes on behind the like the doors of the uh, academy and how m many 
interesting ways of thinking you can even learn in regards to like art creation so Plus, yeah on top of all of mm -hmm. that uh, it depends where you go to the art school oh yeah absolutely so there are right. like so many people who just say that it was a waste of time like they didn't learn anything or their motivation completely was yeah taken out mm -hmm. of them so it really depends like i think you should more well it's always hard to know exactly as a young uh, adolescent especially like what exactly you want to do in life so there are people who are super sure that they want to go into like a specific field like game design background mm -hmm. uh, uh, or artists, illustration yeah, only yeah. not nothing to do with props nothing to do with characters just that so based on mm -hmm. that you can pick very specific academies but if you want to like explore right. a little bit then you can find the academies that have like multiple different kinds of programs and they have like set it up in such a way that the first year you go through many different kinds of like fields you touch ceramics you go through um, like painting you go through like form studies and you go test through, out everything yeah, yeah you go through like like craftsmanship and, and mechanical labor like you know whatever <laughs> and then every every year like after first semester or like the second semester you focus and you narrow 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 down your your field that you are trying to uh, yeah pursue but mm -hmm. how did it work for you like do you enjoy um, or like what? what, what really. No, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so what? What? What would you? What would you say? Like, I'm curious. The to thing hear. is, the thing about me is, I, I've always wanted to go to film school, mm. right? but realistically for me, it wasn't an option because if I wanted to do it right, I would have to either maybe go to the U.S. or something like that, right? Mm. Um, but since I live in Spain, it's kind of like. I don't know, especially here in the north side of Spain, which is Bilbao, where I live. Mm -hmm. The film industry isn't really very popular. Popular, in a way, yeah. Or large so, scale, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. It's not very developed. I don't know. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, so it's harder, right? If I want to do anything around here. Yeah. And also, growing up, we—I mean, we don't have money. <laughs> you know, we're poor, so. Mm. I had to, in a way, be realistic about my options and, you know, going to art school is like the sort of like the, I guess, compromise, the, the compromise that I had to do. Yeah. Also, because I'm good at drawing um, and that could also give me time because me, I don't I don't believe in studying personally. I mm. mean, obviously, you will learn. You will learn a lot if you go to it, but it's not completely necessary. I'm more of a self-taught person. Mm -hmm. I I love I love to learn by myself through other professionals that maybe I don't know put up stuff information online. Online nowadays, like you can learn anything. Yeah. So that's how I've always loved to learn and learning like that. Even in school, I was way above everybody else. Mm. Right. For example, if we were learning, because we learned, for example, Blender. You know the okay. program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I learned it by myself, right? But in school, they teach literally the most basic stuff. Yeah. Me, I've, I've, I was already doing like landscapes and characters and, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you you learn some stuff in art school, but at the same time, if you really want to learn something properly, you'd have to do it on your, on your own. Mm -hmm. Unless you go to like a very in-depth school where they teach you a lot of, you know, in-depth stuff about topics and stuff yeah, like yeah. this it's very unfortunate like what you say yeah i can completely like relate if you are like going to an art school with expectation of some learning something new and all of a sudden you're confronted mm -hmm. with the fact that i'm um, like in terms of skills of particular well yeah instrument or whatever yeah. I, like you're far beyond but like what, what would you say like in terms of uh, art itself like fine arts itself like you would you say like you did you haven't encountered anything in that particular school that was like something new to you or something that you... I learned a lot about, for example, color theory, mm -hmm. um, anatomy, you know, just the basic stuff. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I didn't learn anything. I'm just saying that there's a lot of things that I could definitely learn on my own if I really wanted to. Sure. Um, so yeah. I'm not I'm not saying that going to school is a complete waste of time. There is, it's, that's not the case. Um, mm. But as you mentioned, it really depends on what you're looking for and what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one, yeah. Th one thing that I would suggest is like, yeah, what uh, that kind of feel, yeah, that kind of school where you're taught like uh, quote unquote basics essentially, right? Anatomy, color theory, in a very like an academic sense. 
uh, if you don't have uh, nowadays more or less all of that kind of knowledge exists on the internet like the basics we're talking right. about basics right you can learn anatomy right. pretty well you can learn color theory pretty well and in depth but there are certain mm -hmm. like schools that s teach still certain things that are now um, more or less are being lost or like aren't even necessarily on the foreground of, mm, of yeah. f uh, many different kinds of like fields i, I think like f for instance the design academy that i went to was i don't know how it is now but back then in uh, 2011 in terms of rankings it was one of the top design schools in europe but it was mm -hmm. super cheap to go there like compared to some of the yeah i paid uh, in, uh, for it every year to, uh, 2000 uh, euros 2000 euros yeah. for, oh, for wow. a, your, yeah for a european yeah, that's pretty uh, cheap yeah it is incredibly cheap compared to for instance like the royal academy of arts in uh, britain where you have to pay oh, like yeah. 30000 pounds yeah. for a year it's yeah. in, it's insane but it's understandable yeah. because what the, the students that finish that uh, academy, have they literally have yeah, yeah professionals in a line waiting for them to like grab them and put put them mm -hmm. in whatever field they want to. But that's like super like high niche. But in that school, which was very strange how I came across with it, uh, <laughs> the the color theory that we were learning was but taught by a very interesting person who was who almost had he what the way that he described it he had some sort of an anomaly. Or like some sort of a mm -hmm. optical, like not a disability, but uh, the way he saw colors almost was like kind of glitched a little bit. How you, for instance, when you look through the prism, through a prism, and you mm -hmm. see how the light kind of like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. different uh, fractures around the edges. That that's how more or less like he saw the reality and the way he was teaching color activation through Kandinsky's examples and he brought Johanna Seaton's mm -hmm. color theory and the kind of exercises that he was forcing us to do was something that I never even heard anyone like to teach ever whatsoever I know about mm -hmm. like color wheels and what are complementary colors but putting like these juxtaposing colors together to create like a harmony of like temperature and build a narrative with that that alone was a class that was like super insanely interesting and another one was yeah uh, yeah well i got lucky in terms of that sense and but uh, but there were like examples mm -hmm. but some someone inquisitive enough might have like found out in depth like that those kinds of programs and another one was the guy teaching us form studies and the first lesson he started was introducing mor morphic resonance theory r introduced by Rupert Sheldrake mm -hmm. uh, biologist uh, no, like a lot of people call him a pseudoscientist unfortunately but he never l purports to be like you know like he is a scientist and but the kind of field of study that he's involved in is so almost like metaphysical it has to do with the uh, like almost like metaphysical resonance of, of information just to quickly like I'll finish this ramble his uh, field of study was like uh, uh, focused on information and how information travels in between and through species and one of the experiments that he was looking at I think he wasn't participating in it but it was done way back uh, scientific community was trying to figure out can fear be trans uh, transmitted like genetically of a particular thing and what they mm -hmm. did was they sent in a rat into a small box they sprayed a particular scent in there and as the rat would recognize that scent they would like slightly zap the the rat not that not in a deadly way but just to make the association that this smell is a, a synonymous with the elect electric shock and they did that experiment with the multiple generations of that rat so the that mm -hmm. rat's son that son's son so on and so forth right. and after several generations the the rat the, the the posterity that went into that box and smelled that smell they immediately had the fear reaction so the entire scientific okay. community was like oh interesting and they, they this this was done in the states if i'm not mistaken and then then what the usually what happens when the this sort of experiment is you know purporting some sort of a finding every other country needs to test that mm -hmm. and so they did but across the pond all the other rats that that were not related to that branch of the those rats had the same reaction without the shock so how did that information like travel to to these mm -hmm. other species there's also a right. famous incident of how like monkeys on a particular like japanese one of the japanese islands learned how to wash fruits in water from the sand and then other islands in other islands other monkeys also started to like learn that information so very long-winded information that has to do with this morphic field that potentially theoretically species are able to 
uh, communicate transcend the, yeah transcend the, like yeah. physical barriers and communicate different kinds right. of informations and as an mm -hmm. artist you <laughs> looking at a subject can resonate with it if especially if it's a live subject and mm -hmm. not only draw how the light is hitting its surface and how it creates a texture but feel its i don't like the life force how the density of that object is impacting mm -hmm. the ground that it is sitting on and i'm sitting there in the first like what am i listening to what is this <laughs> and the kind of lessons that he was teaching us i i there's no video that exists on, on youtube i'm sure of it unless maybe somewhere like done probably <laughs> either by that guy or students who went to that so what i'm saying is long-winded ramble yeah there are very unique sort of yeah there are academies that are it takes a, some amount of digging yeah but you can find and uh, till this day i'm using a lot of that information that i've learned but like yeah. like you said you're interested in film so I, perhaps mm -hmm. like your focus deep down was more like if you went to uh, film school i'm sure you would have like gravitated more towards those kinds of like fields of studies mm -hmm. very alternative ways of looking how the lighting works and everything it's mm -hmm. uh, for me i since i was a kid i was like interested in art so anything that had to do with it like mm -hmm. it was immediately gra gravitating towards <laughs> it but anyways done with the ramble that's pretty <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please continue. that's good and again it also depends on because it depends on the sometimes you might get lucky and get a really good teacher yeah yeah um, yeah it's, it really does depend you know but i completely relate with what you're saying i had the same sort of uh uh, what you had the same sort of experience when I went to a, an architectural school after that design school. Like when I went there, mm -hmm. the basics that I had to learn were so like, you know, ba basic. Basic. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. The kind of like, well, like you said, like you knowing Blender and like how to do these things that are far beyond what they were teaching. Mm -hmm. For me, I was like, guys, like morphic resonance, anyone? <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. I get. I think it ultimately comes down to how much you as a person want want to learn you yeah, know? yeah 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 you yeah. could either just go in and take in whatever it is that they're teaching you or you can go beyond that and you know actually learn by yourself in depth um mm -hmm. and try to be better than everybody else <laughs> you true, know? true 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 so it really does yeah it just it ultimate it ultimately go comes down to how much you want to learn i would, yeah. I, I would say Absolutely. So, Even in an environment like an academy, it's still up to you at the end of the day to listen mm -hmm. to those tutors, yeah. to do the work that you're assigned to, or if you're doing it by yourself, you're at the end mm -hmm. of the day responsible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's uh, switch topics now. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Because we've already talked about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah. All right. Now it's more about content creation, right? I just want to yeah. ask, like, how is it that you guys make your videos? Like, how do you structure your, like, the format of your videos? And how do you like how do you divide the work and stuff like this you know well this i'm is sure the... a lot of people might be interested in that yeah 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 yeah. well this is the, the guy who was like uh nagging me in the beginning like so so put put your artistic integrity aside not entirely but just like here's the <laughs> formula we yeah. have to we have to match this format you can't make a 15 minute short like you have to you know so at first, yeah, David was like a crucial. Well, yeah, it was uh, mm -hmm. it was a learning curve for both of us. Obviously, it wasn't like we we or I knew exactly how to do things, but I, I at least had a very good understanding of uh, how to start and from that point on how to learn things and just kind of learn mm -hmm. from experience. Uh, and some of the things is that uh, you have to constantly experiment with your content because. Uh, what I notice is that uh, there are a lot of people who uh, maybe like start doing one thing and then continue and then realize that, okay, I have to like switch up right now. And then they switch up and then it doesn't work out. And then they kind of like get confused on what to do. And then maybe they come back to what they were doing. And so it's a very complicated field because you have to constantly understand how the audience receives your content. So how we basically work it out is, um, as I, as I said, like we test different things, but uh, we have few uh, ideas and scripts that I know for a fact will work well with the audiences uh, because they are based on like mm -hmm. same thing like with the learning, but also with an entertainment. And one of the like mm -hmm. series like that is uh, how to tutorials because everybody likes to learn something right. if it's fast and quick and actually helpful. But at the same mm -hmm. time, if you add to that, like uh, the voiceover, the kind of like a fun drawings, a little animation or something, then you realize mm -hmm. that it like gains more 
interest, more like attention, because it's not just a tutorial where you have to sit down and listen, but you can also be entertained. Right. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. it mm -hmm. uh, varies between like a minimum of maybe like 30 seconds to like a minute or a minute and like 15 seconds. That's uh, like the timing that we have around the short videos that we do. And um, it depends, like, uh, as I said, uh, we do sometimes series of like a series of how to shade or like how to draw clothing. But then mm -hmm. uh, like uh, one thing that we learned was that uh, if you want to introduce something unique, something that you're not sure about, uh, like if it's going to work out with the audience or not, the best time to do it is uh, when you do when you like hop on the wave of like viral videos yeah. and uh, sort of like go on with like these tutorials or like for example what you are doing with like nice characters and you get like few million views then yeah. you can like test out that unique uh, sort of uh, yeah. content that you want to introduce yeah. to your sprinkle audience. in something of your own that you yeah. find might not be trendy or something but you have the urge like an artistic urge to introduce like one uh, one of the things was like how well, to draw from reference how to draw from reference what do you what to, what do i do mm -hmm. uh, to relax um you know, mm -hmm. what do i do when when i procrastinate or things like that yeah. are not necessarily mm -hmm. yeah um, the, like drawing the drunk over the like photos and yeah exactly yeah, also yeah, yeah which fun. is which is yeah changing the structure a little bit but <laughs> yeah this 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 was an interesting uh, thing to uh, to do and but like what, yeah. you, what, what you were saying well uh, at at that moment you have the flow of the uh, new audience and the audience that you already have so mm -hmm. that's kind of like the best time to test these type of things and uh, you mm -hmm. just see the reaction it's uh, like with the recent video that we did uh, we noticed that uh, any time we would uh, show our faces or like show the real world basically mm -hmm. instead of like a paper it were not it, it, work. it didn't work as well as the paper obviously yeah. and so uh, uh we tried recently doing that uh, That's, yeah on the wave of like uh, these viral videos and we did this one video with like how to draw from reference where and we've introduced that one formula that we found recently like few first few seconds of like something being animated was eye grabbing immediately mm -hmm. and that was that like hand moving david was sitting and then bop he appears in reality which was yeah uh, like it, it's a okay. you, you trick the audience in a way oh that's it, interesting yeah it's a reality How you guys are very tactical about your your oh, content yeah it, like the TikTok is a good platform to think about how short of a like attention span people have because uh the TikTok and Instagram both, but on Instagram you still have like a choice of like like roaming around the content, like going on the explore page and checking out posts and then reels. But on TikTok you only like scroll and scroll and maybe search yeah, yeah. something. So the key difference is that on Instagram you what the first feed that you get is the people that you follow. On yeah. on TikTok it's it's just for you page, but the for you page includes like. Po possible that things that you might well. be interested yeah. in like things that are mixed in that you don't necessarily follow so it's so you have to also like think about like in TikTok if you just scroll and if you're that person who sees the video like what will be that first three seconds that like grab your attention yeah and that's like the toughest part to kind of understand because every niche has its own like unique way of showing people and to audience something yeah so yeah mm -hmm. just kind of like uh, roaming around testing different things yeah. still at the stage of just learning how all of this works yeah, yeah, yeah what about you i mean you guys are doing pretty well <laughs> thanks 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 to be honest we're trying we're trying it worked out for you guys uh me uh, i i mean my content isn't very varied in a way it's kind of like the same structure so um i don't know i don't really study my you know what works as much mm. i'm not that tactical i focus more on trying to make the content rather than you know tactically you know seeing what works mm -hmm. and what doesn't um i just got lucky that this specific content worked yeah and i could just yeah. use that to with every single video <laughs> yeah, um yeah, yeah. but there have been other videos that i have done which is like a completely different format which has worked pretty well as well so i don't know it's just some things work some things don't work you know it's just it's it's social media i don't know um <laughs> yeah, just yeah. try your best to be you know catchy and you know uh, quick edits i think that's yeah. mostly what i keep in mind yeah yeah, um, yeah and not try to be slow or boring you know because mm -hmm. i i think i think you as a, as a yeah you're a content creator but you also have to see it as a consumer type 
you know view as well mm -hmm. like does this content will it be entertaining for me you know because i i'm a consumer as well so in yeah. a way i kind of know what works and what doesn't you know subconsciously even if i not specific you know so yeah i think it's also good to show it to other people mm -hmm. you know to maybe friends and stuff seeing if they they oh, yeah. think it's a good idea or oh, not yeah, yeah, rather yeah, yeah, than yeah. just seeing it by yourself because you're the one who created it so sometimes it's hard to get out of that you know because you're yeah, the one yeah. who made it mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. i think it's also good to you know show it to other people saying hey how do what do you feel about this like, how do you you know when does when this work yeah, yeah yeah when are the times when you felt like your attention was <laughs> like that's something that would david listen to like mr beast was doing that as well sending his videos mm -hmm. to his well, friends like there are people you can hire uh, to also send videos to and they just mm -hmm. watch your videos and you just watch them yeah this then... is the moment where my like uh, my attention got like you know carried away but or that, that what you're saying is also like you, you shouldn't I, in my opinion, you shouldn't become too focused on these yeah. technical like aspects of the video making and yeah, content yeah. creation because then you'll just become this like uh, yeah. calculator that tries to calculate every move that you right. have to make. So mm -hmm. you gotta keep it mm -hmm. like natural, keep it like yeah. You just have to enjoy it as well. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless what you enjoy is that obsessive like <laughs> calculation, <laughs> uh, which <laughs> I think like in case of Mr. Beast, that's like what he just enjoys and loves. And he doing, doesn't so. recommend his lifestyle to anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says like a lot of times he's miserable. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. that's that's his shtick, mm -hmm. yeah. which is I I can respect. I can respect. I think we we'll talk about this, but like, who does what? Like, what do you guys do? Like, in terms of Jadokar, like, mm -hmm. who does what? You know, in sure. the content creation process. Right now, I am the content pig. I sit down. <laughs> I am the or the content. Well, I I am the the one who draws. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the times, I script the the text. But the ideas, oftentimes David is also helping me out a lot in terms of because I'm coming up with ideas. There might be like a series that either me or David comes up with, like, for instance, the perspective series way back. I know if just mm -hmm. by default, there's at least like five series, one point perspective, two point, three point, four point, and then five point, which is a fisheye perspective. And in advance, I, we can chill for a little bit or think in advance in terms of ideas. But then we, once we run out of it, David might come on, come around and say, hey, how about like clothing? And another like, what is it, like three or four series came out of that? Or the shading? Shading, yeah. clothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of like script, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of like mm -hmm. scripting, at first, uh, David was involved in that as well because we both didn't know what we were doing. And mm -hmm. throughout the process, once I, w I was uh, also learning how to like adjust my own cadence when I was recording, because now to get him back to the question so now i uh, draw mostly i script everything and i record the, myself and edit the mm -hmm. vo uh, voiceovers uh, by myself because since i know my own cadence well enough it's easier for me mm -hmm. to write the text for myself but yeah mm -hmm. da david yeah yeah, yeah. well uh, you're the one who is like managing the content you are the one who helps me out with the uh, uh, the 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 video ideas and in terms of long format videos you're the one who yeah the long format okay. videos too it's it's you're the one the, who's filming oh, what what is it well you're editing you're the the shorts who's editing it shorts for now I'm the one who edits okay. at the start David was involved with that as well because, uh, because okay. I wasn't even like familiar with CapCut so you're basically doing the whole content creation thing like you're recording you're scripting and editing yes but okay what David right. does uh, once I'm done with all of this uh, David makes the thumbnail uh, writes the okay. description for everything posts uh, these videos everywhere on TikTok, Instagram and on YouTube mm -hmm. and he checks in on the uh, our Patreon page, it sees what's happening mm -hmm. there, then informs me, hey, so, so you got to do something. And the, and mm -hmm. yeah, he keeps an eye on all of this stuff. I yeah. do that as well. I'm not wholly unaware of it. But since I'm primarily focused on like content creation, my main focus is on this. But the David yeah. comes around yeah. and yeah, he, he basically, he's like a director in, in, a, in a sense. He, like an orchestra mm -hmm. and it's, it's very difficult to be just by yourself and do all of these things and uh, at the same time since we have like other projects that we want to focus on and yeah like constantly we do something new like uh, same with the patreon page like we took it took us about like month and a half to like build all the proper videos and like posts that we wanted and everything like that mm -hmm. so for all of that stuff uh it takes like uh 
basically the time to understand how to organize these things and like even with Soso too like sometimes Soso really loves to be perfect with his uh, art so yeah. you have to sometimes like remind him to yeah. like okay yeah. let's let's just uh, focus on finishing this <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but at yeah. the same time like i really appreciate what he's doing and uh, like the amount of work he puts into his works is just amazing yeah. but that's kind of like uh, the best thing about us uh, since we're brothers and uh, we just kind of like mm -hmm. it's very easy for us to communicate we just tell each other straightforward like okay don't do this do this like this is bad this is good and the same like with mm -hmm. him to me it's it's the best way of communicating because we don't take this like personally or anything we just yeah kind of like understand it hear it learn it okay do it next time better we're on a mission we're on a mission and, and, we, <laughs> and we both are trying our best to yeah, yeah. Help, help each other out but yeah now That's like good. with the youtube i think uh we're gonna do be we're gonna be doing more like um, uh, it's gonna be more inclusive in terms of like we both will need to yeah yeah and you had a good uh, idea and I was also thinking about it as well but you were more thought it out because now the recent videos that we were making there they took a lot of time to like edit uh, not only edit but right. film as well but David has been editing now this particular video for a while now, because there's so many like close-ups different shots the stabilization process alone of these footages like oh, just we, effects and everything but yeah like, we also don't the have the time. yeah yeah but i mean God, it's a nightmare when i look at the file it's <laughs> it's, it's crazy so we are thinking of making the more like the casual ish series uh what's the name of that bodybuilder sam sulk sam sulk like sam sulk's content is it's completely out of out of the norm in terms of his pacing. He just starts his video in a car, right? He starts his video in the car, goes to gym, goes back in the car. There's no flashy editing, nothing. But he gets like a hell of views, and uh, yeah, and it's and the easiest views, content it's... to create. Like you just record yourself, like vlogging essentially. But we yeah. we kind of want to like try that sort of a format. We don't want to. So it's more of a like a to say like very roughly. Uh, just mm -hmm. to imagine like a mix between like early Mr. Beast and Sam Sulek. So it's, it has pacing, it has effects, but it, it it's also natural to the audience. So like what, what I mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't watch Sam Sulek, but I kind of like watched his audience and like how he engages with them. And I like the engagement that he has with people that I imagine like who watches him. Like he talks very honestly about everything and just kind of like mm -hmm. almost communicates one on one with the audience. So that's uh, the sort of like communication I would like to establish with the people who yeah. watch our stuff. It is interesting how he got so popular with, you know, how yeah. everything is going to short form content and everybody has such a short attention span that how did he blow up with hmm. such boring, not really boring, but like really no. slow paced Absolutely. Yeah. videos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's interesting, you know? Um, and I think it just comes down to just it really doesn't matter, you know, like sometimes like it, it, it also comes down to a lot of different factors as well. Also, maybe his personality mm -hmm. um, and you just never know, you know, yeah. so you just got to try different things. At the end of the day, people blow up for different reasons and, you know, you don't always have to follow the the wave, I guess, of mm -hmm. how everybody does it, because one thing that makes people blow up is being different mm. yeah you know? mm -hmm. uh, yep that that's all it comes down to really i do so, believe that as well yeah that's why i knew that for example when i saw your videos i knew it immediately that you guys were gonna blow up <laughs> one way or another you were gonna do because it was so unique and the way the uh. the way you guys made the videos as well um i just knew so that's yeah that's nice. if if i were to give somebody advice on you know if they're starting out um what what can they do to, you know like the best advice is you know just be unique and mm -hmm. not try to follow the trend in a way yeah. try to you create the trend i would say yeah, absolutely you know? yes <laughs> i do agree and i have conversations with david like sometimes like i have that feeling um these how to's are good and the the way that we make them are unique but i I want to hopefully want to move away at some point because even like at some point, no matter what I, whether I want or don't want, there I'll run out of how tos. There's like there's only so much I can teach. So and I mean, then you've the, got comments. People are saying nonstop, you know. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. suggestions in the comment section. There's I guess. suggestions. Yeah. There are like original uh, comic stories that me and David have ideas about that as well. Creating original characters or just showing mm -hmm. interesting. Pro yeah. So that what you're saying, you create your the trend. Absolutely, I agree with that 100. percent True. Making yeah. uh, the content unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or how do you come up with your ideas? Is uh, one that I wanna. Sure. No, like, do you have like a bo like an idea? kind of bored written down like or how do you go about making your videos yes uh, right now we don't have a whiteboard but we are planning to get one because <laughs> I think it's a really nice thing like the to just to look that's at the solution thing. to the problem <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so far we've been using just like you know our phone notes but uh, mm -hmm. yeah at the very beginning uh, now it's very different, but at the very beginning, I felt like, oh my God, there's limitless ideas I have. Like I, I, I can like, pump out content for years. Well, but it's still like that. But it's yeah, yeah, just, uh... it is kind of like that. It is. But now we are very attuned to what is trending on our page. Yeah. We we don't think in terms of like, oh, we can we can make anything because at the beginning it doesn't matter. We don't have an we don't have an audience. So whatever we try, right. it we just do. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and so that in that sense we had plenty of different kinds of ideas more like we did just random like 14 unique faces that I drew but one, oh, yeah, one yeah. of our first series then we like looked at mm -hmm. what are challenges like what are different chal art challenges that people do so there was like 10 second one minute and 10 minutes kind of like a, more like a following the trend yeah just to test it out then we've just decided you know what uh, screw this for it the time being uh i want to draw martians for some reason i was big because i was reading ray bradbury's uh martian chronicles at the time oh yeah yeah and i was into that state as well that's also mm -hmm. sometimes wherever the ideas come from it might be something that it, that is influencing me at the time and that can cause like a particular like yeah but also like uh, the thing is that we we have original ideas and literally like just limitless ideas that we want to create at some point but mm -hmm. the thing is the in in short format videos it's very hard to yeah. showcase those ideas and uh, right. at the same time like uh, you think that is it worth to spend like day and a half uh, on filming this thing that will not be viewed or will not be like appreciated enough yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. not just about like uh, oh we want people to like say that it's amazing or something it's just like we want to present it in the best way possible so mm -hmm. maybe the time for it will be in the future and instead of uh, trying to show this right now in a like a one minute video we can do this mm -hmm. like later in a long format video and yeah, right yeah, now yeah. it's yeah right now it's just kind of like right now just do what works yeah we sit down and, and uh, we still yeah. do some fun stuff like we, we we always try to implement some like goofy things that represent our personalities what because... happens to a karen when she gets angry yeah, yeah, yeah. or, or, or we, we had this like moment i was i remember like when, when before we did all this uh one of my attempts my personal attempts was to and we also tried to content create separately as well david had a period of time where he was making short videos of like movie analysis movie analysis kind of like some insights yeah. and secrets and yeah, yeah. Kind of and at the yeah. time with my personal uh, uh, instagram page i tried to participate in an inktober challenge i don't know if you've heard of the, the uh, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah 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 and we uh, i did that way back none of my drawings got uh, uh, featured <laughs> but but listen <laughs> but I'm, I'm kidding i'm kidding it was it was uh, fun just to do it and just as a challenge uh -huh. and now th th around this time when october came around i was like david why don't we try it now with not because we have like great numbers or anything but just to what i thought was interesting to engage our audience and to present them this this mm -hmm. challenge this particular like daily prompts for one month and uh, right. it was almost disastrous because yeah. Uh, uh, yeah for some reason it absolutely didn't work at all only our followers were watching this and no video was uh, being uh, yeah. pushed by instagram out there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. to a newer audience and so we were we had days where we were like then I, we stopped filming those reels and we like interspersed uh, well, because we just realized that yeah. we can't be doing this like because we were month. yeah it's a standard yeah. like at the at the point that we were in terms of like the numbers of the followers that we had it's a standard thing to lose like 2,000 followers or 1,000 followers daily so yeah yeah, yeah. anyways basically uh, uh, <laughs> another ramble yeah ideas we're talking about ideas right oh. 
But yeah. then again, like uh, it's still nice to engage your audience in challenges like this because we still continue mm -hmm. to post the drawings, just didn't do the reels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was one idea. But yeah, like you said, like what works is always in the back of our mind. But the, then uh, from time to time, we have like artistic mm -hmm. urges when we decide to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's try something. Completely. I think that, yeah, that's important. But you do so also to, like yeah. uh, I've seen some uh, some of the videos that you do that are like a bit different. Even like uh, one of the videos you did with uh, trying to build the shadow uh, mm. shadow art, the, which uh, didn't end up. Uh, oh my gosh, that was like <laughs> that up. was like way back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, okay. yeah. <laughs> but how do you come up ago. like uh, what what makes you decide to like? just switch switch uh, to the different gear and like create something ah, different. <laughs> I just love to do new things, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe it's just, I think I saw the idea somewhere. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what made me make that video, but I think it comes down to my mind always comes up with ideas. That's how my mind works and just coming up with new ideas and i just execute them <laughs> basically okay. so whenever i see somebody i don't know if i see like an interesting drawing or for example maybe somebody's doing light drawing or something i don't know mm -hmm. i'm like huh what what if i do a video about that or something you know mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's why from time to time i like to make like creative stuff in a way um because it just keeps my creativity i don't know like flowing um, moving yeah yeah absolutely because i'm overall a creative person um so i just like to execute new ideas so yeah that's how my mind works just by but, the way yeah. also uh i want to say because uh, uh, you're the one uh to contact us and i honestly the first time i saw your message i was like Holy shit! <laughs> like, <'cause laughs> really? I was watching you, and I completely didn't expect that yeah. someone would be like interested to like have anything to do with us. Because you know, like we just uh, we are not used to like attention or anything. We're, this is like as as we said, oh. like happened so quickly. So just we wanted to just thank you for this oh, wow. whole like uh, thing that we're doing right now. Because it's like really really nice to communicate with people who also have similar experience in this field. Yeah. It's it's just wow. so closed up because uh, yeah like most of the people around us uh, i mean the people who we know personally we don't know anyone who has achieved anything like this and uh, we can't like share yeah. our thoughts it's it's very difficult to they can't relate either yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. so it is. all this to me is pretty new really like i, I know i know but like that's last year yeah this day last year i was completely unknown by anybody mm -hmm. seriously yeah yeah same here so it's like <laughs> we're both in a similar cause I think we both blew up uh, blew up at the same time yeah kind of like, yeah, yeah yeah roughly the same time so yeah that's why I wanted to also talk to you guys and you know know your perspective on on things and I also like to do collab with other people cause I feel like I don't know I just love interacting with other content creators and you know from time to time I don't know if you've seen like some of my past videos but I, I also do like podcasts with with people with content creators and I just love to interact with other people, so yeah. Yeah, this this um, is something that we'd like to do as well, like uh, more often mm -hmm. going forward for sure. But now you're like, I think on Instagram you're past, like you've passed me, <laughs> like Support. on in terms of followers. I th I know I uh, maybe I I don't know. But we're at what like one point five. Yeah, it's one point five. Yeah, it's absurd. Yeah, yeah. you're you growing know. pretty pretty quickly. So now you're. Ah, well, dude. The... well, you just like in one week, I think you gained like five hundred thousand followers on yeah, the, man, uh, on YouTube in, on YouTube as well. Oh, on YouTube, yeah. <laughs> yeah now I'm growing on YouTube pretty quickly. That's, dude, that's and I'm that. almost hitting a million on YouTube, which is crazy. No, honestly, like every time yeah. I check like either your account or like some other people who I like and see like the following uh, going like up and up, I'm just so excited because the one thing that we also noticed, especially on YouTube. Uh, like about five or four years ago art was kind of like uh a new not a new thing but like kind of viral thing mm. on youtube yeah it was trendy and yeah and at that point uh, after that point it, it kind of like uh started to like lower down and down and down and still yeah. like some people are uh, pretty good at uh, like creating art content but i just want to see mm -hmm. like more of this interest from audience because like there are so many things that can be created i feel like it just comes down to people actually doing things because mm -hmm. I yeah. think the internet is receptive to blowing up anybody, blowing up whatever, you mm -hmm. know. It just comes down to 
who is ready to like do that like put that you mm. know get exactly yeah take take yeah. that step you know and be consistent and with it yeah as well yeah yeah so yeah I'm, I'm i'm really glad that you know things are starting to to look good in the for the art <laughs> community too so i want to ask like all right if you were to give somebody right you've got a million followers i've got a million followers i want to ask your advice how can you get a million followers for anybody who is like trying to get into the space and mm -hmm. you know well <laughs> uh, at the same time the ultimate it's, advice yeah of course uh, uh, it's hard to predict what's going to happen but uh, w one thing that we're actually soon uh, are planning to do we're um, planning to do like a live session with some of our followers where we're going to talk exactly about the stuff and uh, so our mm -hmm. first master class yeah something like that uh -huh. it's just kind of like sharing our so, insight basically yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we've been thinking about this exact this exact question and uh, the one great thing about the social media is that uh, you you almost have a guarantee to succeed if you stay consistent if you find your niche and if you love doing what you're doing and these mm -hmm. three things are kind of basically just creating the path for you which will lead you at some point to maybe not immediately immediately to 1 million followers but even like 100,000 followers on that's Instagram huge. or YouTube like that's that's yeah. already such such a great thing to happen people and take yeah. years, it's for some people it takes years to get to those kinds of numbers and nowadays yeah like right. and by consistency it it's simple as like daily videos just daily it it is yeah. crucial right. yeah even when we were looking and David one was the one who was like looking into the parameters and uh, requirements for yeah yeah like what what does the Instagram platform and TikTok do for and like there are, there are incentives for people to keep keep uh, posting as often as they can and then the platform promotes that so it is almost down to like a formula but yeah when one of the crucial thing is to love yeah. what you do as well Just, and as 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 funny as it's like as maybe strange as it sounds for some people I think nowadays it's easy to start from shorts and then go into long format if you want to do long mm -hmm. format at all because mm -hmm. right. uh, of course like in terms of long format videos if you want to start youtube like uh, you can start doing like a video a week and that's considered to be nice nowadays in terms of consistency but the, it will take you months and maybe even years to reach anything right. yeah because youtube doesn't promote on that same level it's it works yeah. strangely but lo and behold with even within the youtube shorts this is how I, I believe you as well and us like we mm -hmm. po we're posting these shorts. Well, at least for us, like we we have what like f five or six videos on our channel, but we have up to like a one hundred and eighty uh, videos Something short like short yeah, videos. Yeah, yeah. And through those, they started to go viral recently, and now we're like up to two two hundred k uh, subscribers as well. Mm -hmm. So use that for anyone out there who's listening <laughs> yes you in the camera right there yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> there yeah try try and be... is the ultimate yeah because ultimate, that way uh, at least uh yeah it, it, it also depends of course on the niche that's that's one of the like most important things mm -hmm. like if you for example if you're gaming that's already kind of like uh, you have exactly what you need to do you know what what to do but mm -hmm. for example if you're traveling like at that point you have to not just uh, sit down and like uh, start recording okay i'm like just gonna travel record everything think about like your image what kind of image do you want to represent uh, in internet do you want to be like do you want to show your face do you not want to show your face do you want to be like the traveler who teaches people uh, how to spend the less the most like least amount of money when traveling or do you want to like show luxurious things if you have an opportunity to show something like this mm -hmm. so like every every theme has its niche and every niche has its like even like a more sub niche or something yeah sub niche yeah. basically so mm -hmm. you can create this idea of what you want to yeah. be but uh, the best suggestion will be just start doing yeah. something around that niche yeah. and then direct it towards something specific yes. and just like come up with the first mm -hmm. most important yeah, things yeah, yeah. that you need to know and work tirelessly every day never stop <laughs> do it as often no, 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 no. it's it's also crucial to as a note don't burn yourself out like yeah um it i i yeah. truly for me it would be very difficult to like say f say for someone who has never done something like this right who d don't even know like their capacity towards like how to how much 
or how long does it take them to overwork themselves or something yeah it's something that you have to figure out like also through t- trial and error but yeah it's it's crucial to mm-hmm. not not to do it to such an extent where mm-hmm. you start hating what you're doing yeah but, yeah, yeah yeah figuring out the you know. see, thing i have i have a unique perspective on that because no. as i said like i i'm not completely like passionate about art like i mm. i'm good at creating I'm good at drawing. That's about mm-hmm. it. But I'm not like passionate about it. So I don't know if I would say I would ever burn out mm. because I do it more of kind of in a disciplinary dis- disciplinary way, mm-hmm. right? Um, rather than I do it because I love it, mm. right? Because yeah, I, I, I don't l- completely love it. So yeah. I I just do it because it's more of a you know, consistency and it's more of a mindset, I would say, because also mm-hmm. you talk about burnout and stuff like this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, it's important. It's also, it's important to love what you're doing. Yes, but at the same time, motivation isn't the only way for you to be consistent because it's you're not always yeah. gonna feel like you're motivated to oh yeah to make videos daily videos. You yeah. know, so that's it a good point. Goes more than it. It takes more than motivation to just to do this consistently. Yeah. yeah. So. So I feel like that's kind of what has been keeping me going in a way. Um, so I've kind of numbed myself in a way. You know, I'm not really thinking, oh, am I motivated to do this or not? Um, I guess the the part where I'm motivated is doing other things outside of this. You know, like scratching that creative urge, as we talked about, like creating unique stuff from time to time. Um, is what drives me sometimes to 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 keep my creativity going Mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean mean, that's that's the advice i would give you if if it's somebody that you know wants to do this consistently and for a long time is to not really rely on motivation to do it because yeah it's not gonna work out well and you're gonna give up pretty pretty quickly (laughs) yeah yeah no not relying on motivation yeah it's i would agree as well it's it's not something you you should do (laughs) But, but just like mm-hmm. we, 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 what I meant by like and David uh, as, as well, like if if you just force yourself to do so, like let's say you hate cooking, but I'm gonna become a cooking channel, right? No, but you're not gonna hate it. Like if you hate it, you're obviously not. No, you're not gonna have a good time. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Obviously, yeah. there's you have to like like it in a way. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that like w- you are comfortable with, like doing consistently right. enough and everything. Right. Yeah, because there might oh, be certain. Yeah, like, yeah. to me also. Uh, the loving what you do doesn't necessarily mean uh, like you have to love drawing these things or you have to love filming these things it's more like mm-hmm. you love the idea of where this might lead you yeah if you mm-hmm. like exactly. because yeah. you might start doing something and you know like what you're saying you know exactly that you are not going to become like a artist in terms of a drawing like you don't want to pursue yourself in drawing you want to do bigger projects like filming stuff mm-hmm. and stuff like this but right you love the idea that it will lead you to that point and mm-hmm. that's like i think one of the not just mm-hmm. motivations but like uh like a fire that burns inside you to make and like be disciplined about this yeah. because you know that this stuff this work will lead you to your like ultimate dream or goal i think you have to have that you have to have the ultimate goal mm-hmm. yeah yeah. Like something to strive to, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, absolutely. That is that is the ultimate f- fuel in a way to keep yeah. going. I would say. And so, even for people yeah, who important. don't have like, because one of the like uh, issues with the young adults who like finish a, a high school or like university, they don't really know what to pursue themselves in. But still, like there must be something that you just gotta like really think about what do you want to do in the future? Like, is it just like, do you want to become like, I don't know, a bank cashier or like a content creator or whatever it is. But even just thinking about the lifestyle, what kind of lifestyle do you want to have? Do you want to become an office person? Mm -hmm. Do you want to travel? Do you want to do this? And if you eventually learn about yourself, like what you want to do, like, for example, I want to live in woods and not mm-hmm. communicate with people and just be by myself then maybe content creating is kind of like for you because you can be remote yeah. you can do whatever you want from like right. house and woods and just like you kind of ha- you have to research your own self because otherwise mm-hmm. exactly uh, you'll get lost in life and 
life can be very a difficult path okay. uh, uh, ruthless deep thoughts <laughs> oh my god i don't know if it's kind of related to this but for example going into if you want to do long form content mm -hmm. right that's your ultimate goal yeah mm -hmm. but you know short form is what's working mm -hmm. yeah and i think we've we've talked about this a bit uh, before but you know you just you, you just have to in a way do that to end up going to your ultimate goal right like t t maybe start doing short form get some audience and then eventually once you build an audience then you can start doing long form so i feel like you you have to be realistic and adapt right okay i want to mm -hmm. be a, a youtuber right but if the, it, i know it's going to be hard but what are the the other options i guess that could lead me to do that right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um so yeah, I think that's 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 important to know as well and yeah. to be realistic. Mm -hmm. The ability to yeah put aside uh, like you might have that ultimate goal, but you have to like uh, mm -hmm. adapt yourself uh, yeah. even mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm, to the to mm -hmm. the current environment, like you say. Yeah, for sure. Well, I would right. never th uh, yeah a couple well, a year ago I would never imagine myself not just succeeding but like dedicating my time and effort for short format videos that's not... i did not think about it either yeah 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 <laughs> it yeah, just actually... came out of nowhere uh -huh. and seriously the idea literally just came to me one night and i went and i did it and i did it the next morning mm -hmm. out of mm -hmm. nowhere i'm like okay what works yeah okay sit down what works <laughs> realistically <laughs> what goes viral uh-huh uh-huh asmr videos yeah smr cook, cooking videos yeah i don't know why those i don't i don't know why those go viral and i'm like is anybody doing that in drawing hmm. mm. <laughs> you know yeah. and that's that's literally how it started and the next day i recorded something blew up instantly i'm yeah. like all right I, I gotta capitalize on this every single day i gotta make <laughs> yeah. something yeah, yeah and yeah, then yeah. Here we are. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm curious to ask you, uh, how has your life changed, uh, like from the point that you started to gain the, this following and kind of realized that you have to like put more and more effort into like filming and everything? Okay, my life has changed for sure in terms of my views and what I'm able to achieve. Because these, like for example, this opened so much, so many doors for me. Mm -hmm. um i know ult ultimately content creation is for me i, w I would want it to be on the side it w it's not something that i want to do as uh for a living like my ultimate goal is to make films mm -hmm. hopefully maybe direct or act in movies that is my ultimate goal um doing like for example blowing up has opened so many so many people has reached out to me like for example actors and stuff like this that kind of opened the door for me in a lot of different fields, right? Um, that has nothing to do with drawing. So in a way, it, it's it's opened up my the doors for me. Because mm -hmm. again, I live in a place where there's nothing related to this filming and I have no yeah. contact in, the, in Hollywood, nothing. Um, but for example, uh, I don't know if you know who Jesse, Jesse T. Usher is. He's an actor, he mm -hmm. did The Boys. Ah, oh, well. um, he's A Train. A Train. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so him, for example, we're talking. We're gonna make something together. You know? Yeah. Like, what the heck, right? That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so, and other directors. I've done podcasts with other people. Like a producer, um, was like he has a podcast, and you know we're just talking, and I just in the in, in the middle of the podcast we were like. Uh, he, he talked a bit about that he's a director, producer. I'm like, oh, I love doing those things. And, you know, it just skyballed into one day, let's make a film together, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just, yeah, this, uh, these are the things that are happening. So next year, there's going to be a couple projects that I have in mind to do. And in that aspect, it's changed my life. All right, in other aspects, for example, the financial side, it's opened many doors as well. I've, you know, realistically, I'm getting an absurd amount of money. <laughs> like... Compared to the, I guess, the normal standards, I guess. Um, so that's that's a good thing, I guess. Because, for example, I I can now buy my own place. I could get my own place if I wanted to. Um, which opens the door to make more videos and stuff like this. 
yeah, it just overall my life has just completely changed, <laughs> really. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's me. What about you guys? How has this whole thing impacted you guys? <laughs> well, uh, uh kind of similarly about the first part of what you were talking. It's uh, opens up the doors in uh, many aspects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like. Yeah, but uh, it's kind of interesting because. Uh, <clears throat> um. We, we kind of realize that everything that we wish to work for, like the future projects and all that kind of stuff, we have to like put more effort into trying to reach to specific people who could help us in that uh, instead of mm -hmm. just like uh, waiting for someone or just like hanging around. Yeah. Uh, but right. it definitely like created a way bigger perspective on how soon and how big of projects we can do in the very like near future because now we have all this uh, ability to create something and immediately put out into um, our platforms to for our audience so that mm -hmm. they could help us to kind of like promote this stuff and same with like the comic series that we want to do in the future and uh, mm -hmm. that's definitely one thing that we are very happy about uh, but on a kind of an interesting side which uh, I'll try to like uh, say it in a short way is uh, since uh, we are like from the country Georgia, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. this country specifically doesn't uh, really uh, uh, attract, uh, so to say, like monetization policies right. or anything like this. So in that field, we're still kind of like hanging around because there's no point for us to monetize anything because it's not uh, that there's no point there's okay. no possibility well we can't monetize for example tiktok or, or really? instagram yeah yeah but that's okay so that's 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 something i wanted to ask like how do you, like making a living how how does it work like we're still, how you we're still doing our uh, day jobs we we can't uh, okay yeah, the, yeah. The what about sponsorships uh, yeah, this is what we um, have prepared now. This was such a hectic process, like we said. We've organized our Patreon. Finally, we finished our media kit that we want to now start sending to different com companies. And hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll start to see some offers and things like where we can do sponsored content. But that's also like So nobody's the... reaching out to you guys? In terms of like just uh, out of there nowhere, like, like, uh, like you? Yeah, no, nobody has. There have been a few people really? who reached yeah. out, but uh, like the only offers they had was for example like oh we're gonna send you like our product and like do a video about it right. and it's like uh, for example there was this one like sunglass company i can't remember the name and i'm not gonna say it uh, but uh, like it's like why would we <laughs> promote a sunglasses in an art channel like right. I, I don't want our audience right. to feel like uh, oh they're trying to like shove something to us uh, that we don't want to see so we now with this media kit we want to contact specific brands like uh, like art uh, supplier brands or um, anything closely enough related to that that could be like you know our art utensils or basic things like you know in terms of a, an artist a, a nice backpack or something like that is, is not all, just that but like companies mm -hmm. that are actually interested in artists and uh, just to find also. like similar yeah uh, ideas with them uh, and that's like one of the things that we've been working on because we wanted to like create a really nice uh, presentation for that, the, like for the emails and all that kind of stuff. But uh, meanwhile, mm -hmm. doing like your day job and also trying to manage uh, your social media and like post not just on TikTok and Instagram, but like work on long format videos like that takes time. And so and since this all of this yeah. happens so fast. We we're almost like discombobulated right. a little bit. Like all we we made a merch store like a while ago, and mm -hmm. we did made like a few designs. And since then, I haven't touched it. We even <laughs> haven't had like proper time to promote it or something. Cause like it's right. Yeah, it's very it's very like a lot. We're hoping to now uh, soon enough once David moves to the states and all the like the documentation process is gonna happen soon. Technically, then we can like register because we are not even verified on uh, on instagram well yeah, yeah but that's uh, kind of like a that's hard yeah 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 yeah. it is but it's not it deterring us from uh, continuing uh, uh, our job because what yeah. even what we have right now is still like you said we can dm someone or we can contact someone and uh, start a conversation and uh, like just for the mm -hmm. fact that they look at us like oh wow you guys are... uh, yeah, but that's like the yeah. hardest thing is to manage all these things together because uh the reason why we can't uh, focus on this completely is because of this like financial situation and at the same time we have to be focused on our like jobs so you're not even monetized on YouTube 
Nope. <laughs> no. On YouTube. Holy. Seriously. Yeah. On YouTube, we haven't even technically reached uh, 10 million views. Uh, maybe at this point, but like a few days in ago. In shorts, in terms of in shorts. shorts, yeah. And That's in terms crazy. of like 4,000 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there's the same things for YouTube. Like even if we reach those uh, requirements, uh, I don't see why we would monetize it from our like uh, personal IDs because uh, our IDs are connected to this country. Yeah. And this country's uh, interest in terms of advertising is very, very low. It's so, non-existent. Oh, uh, yeah. In terms of YouTube, it, YouTube it is, YouTube. but it's very small because advertising. Think, okay. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm going to yeah. suggest something to you guys. And I think it's probably it's going to be best if you just move out to another country. Seriously. Well, that's... Yeah. The way your life will change. In terms I know of how much you're making <laughs> is gonna be drastic. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, I'm in the process of doing this. I'm uh, in the process of legal documentation and everything, and I'm waiting for my interview uh, to move to US. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the that's... final stage, and uh, yeah, it's somehow coincided with us going viral and everything now. And if we manage to link our channel with the the US uh like mm -hmm. do documents that's the primary stage for like yeah, all of it's just all it's so funny because like uh besides all the fun and like this creative stuff and everything that we do it, it like from outside uh to all, all of our friends and the people who like uh have seen us uh, it looks all like fun and interesting and kind of cool to have all of this but at the same time you realize that if you want to pursue this professionally and like do do really well in this field then you have to completely dedicate your time to this and if you want to do that then you have to put away everything else beside you and still like as i told you uh, i work in the film industry and uh, my job and my like schedule is so chaotic i i can't uh, yeah. really predict what's mm -hmm. going to happen in like next month so like i get a call from someone important i have to like go oh, i can't uh, I, I just recently started to say no to some projects because uh, I feel like this is way way more important right now in our life than the stuff that I've been doing because um, as I said like uh, the like this yeah. type of job doesn't guarantee you like immediate success but the, what we're doing and what some people can like succeed with social media will technically almost guarantee uh, success at some point so. Yeah, we're kind of like <laughs> roaming around. It's uh, it's a tough situation, but uh, I we still are That's extremely happy about what's happening, and uh, this is honestly mm -hmm. like uh, compared to all the past years that we've been trying to achieve something. This is uh, just so unique and so random that like it mm -hmm. happened right now at this time. But yeah, everything f for yeah. the future. I know that everything's gonna be fine and great, but you know yeah, you gotta yeah. be patient. You guys are covered. Yeah. But yeah, things will work out for sure. Just, uh, just gotta be patient. I I have another question. Uh, <laughs> what was like the, uh, who was the first person and person to that you showed like your success? Like who was the first person you wanted to share this with? That I wanted to share it with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess my parents. Mm -hmm. And what was the reaction? Because they did not have um they didn't have faith in me basically mm. and in a way it's kind of like i don't want to say i told you so but at the same time yes i but i understand where they come from because my family is like traditional you know and you know they have a specific way of looking at things and you have to work uh, like and how to do things in a specific way like they have an idea of what success is, which is not my my idea. Um, so we have like clashing sort of ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and for a long time, things didn't work out for me for many, many years. And yeah. it's understandable why they would think that. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess them and I don't know, my friends really like that's I don't I don't I don't know, really. That's about it. Yeah, I just wanted to show people that it's possible to to if for anybody who doubted me mm. in any way that it is completely possible to pursue this. Me being an example to people, right? Yeah. Basically the entire world. I just wanted to sh tell everybody once I mean. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. What about you guys? Uh, well, we kept it a, a, a 
just secret for a time being because it was like a shocking thing that was happening. But yeah, we're like uh, we're, we're quite close with our uh, with our mom. Oh yeah, with our mom. So she she already mm -hmm. knew that we were on that path. But in terms of our friend groups, we can we just have a few yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, I have like one childhood friend who who right now he lives in America, and uh, I was visiting him at that time. And ah yeah, and you and you kept mm -hmm. that secret from him for a while. Yeah, like, yeah, I kept it for a while till we like reached I think three hundred thousand followers or something like this, and. Uh, I just showed it to him, like, mm -hmm. uh, well, what, what do you think about this channel? And he's like, oh, hey, interesting. And because, uh, like, we're very open minded with each other and, like, we've talked about these kind of things in the past. And, like, at the point where he realized, wait, wait a second, wait, wait, he, like, saw my face and, like, what's happening? What, what, what is this? <laughs> so it, it's been very positive from, like, uh, the close friends and, the, and our mother. And uh, it, it's very nice to see this kind of reaction but uh what i like from the start had a feeling uh was that uh, like some of the people and like people who will in the future kind of like recognize us or like uh, see what we're doing and stuff like this uh, i don't know how it is around the globe but uh, in some cases in uh, this country I'm, i don't want to say that everybody's like that but mm -hmm. a lot of people kind of look at you with a very skeptical eye as soon as they like hear that you're an influencer mm -hmm. because still it's not a very common thing for people at least uh, in here in Georgia to recognize influencers and just like Instagram people or TikTok people or YouTube people and, and so uh, mm -hmm. we, we know that we have to be very uh, not careful but just kind of like very casual about this stuff and we don't want to we don't have a feeling that we want to like uh, scream about this or like talk with people about this because um, it just kind of resonates uh, not the best uh, reflection or like reaction from them so unfortunately yeah yeah but uh, i got a similar thing when i went to armenia which is oh uh, yeah i don't know if it's the same like um mentality in like how it is in armenia but mm. for, like for example with my <laughs> my girlfriend in our well my girlfriend is armenian mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she, from what she told me is like everybody's so judgmental mm, and yeah she's kind of careful to because everybody's just watching each other and just you know have an opinion about everybody um i don't know if it's like it's the same way in georgia but it is similar mm. well it, the situation is that like in countries like this uh, i obviously don't know like the complete political situation of armenia but in georgia like uh there basically there is no middle class what you what like americans would call middle class like what middle class is considered in georgia is like uh, paying debt from month to month and kind of like trying to survive and uh, just having like a very regular job and uh, like people barely manage to go on holidays and yeah. stuff like this so everybody has like an eye for other people so if someone succeeds in something like they immediately like look at you like ah oh, like w w what did you do like well what is the trick well yeah. what, what did what how did you manage who do you, who do you know yeah like, yeah so who are your contacts it, it's interesting but at the same time like uh, there are such amazing people in this country and uh, that's like as we said like one of our goals is to uh, find these people and like uh, the some some of our friends are already here and trying to like do something kind of like we know that like government doesn't properly finance artists and like especially film industry like mm -hmm. there have been like some recent drama happening but uh, at some point like in a few years i'm 100 percent sure that we'll be able to help these people out and even like maybe finance films uh, that are filmed in georgia because they don't need like millions and millions of dollars like people manage to film really good movies for like just like uh, what's the lowest absurd amount of money that you actually remember like <laughs> like uh, up to forty thousand dollars yeah to film a full length film for forty thousand dollars full it's... length not a short no no yeah, not a short yeah. that's almost impossible but that like they manage and there are still like successful movies that have been done like this that are sent to festivals and uh, they grab yeah. a few awards and stuff yeah. yeah yeah and not just like any kind of festivals like berlin aria and stuff yeah, like yeah, this. yeah. so um and that's yeah. that's kind of like a, a interesting fact about uh just uh, being this type of person but yeah just uh interesting mm -hmm. to hear from uh someone who has a similar path in this field so indeed indeed mm -hmm. yeah budget shouldn't be something that limits you in a way mm -hmm. uh you know in terms of what it is that you want to do and yeah i've 
I've followed that sort of mentality with kind of everything, really, even content creation, you know. Um, you don't have to have, like, the fanciest anything to make good stuff, you know. So, mm -hmm. like, in like, now we're talking about, like, gears and stuff. Like, what camera do you use and what, you know, filming oh, equipment yeah. do you use? It's right now. This I connected my uh, iPhone 14 uh, to uh, use this as a webcam, but okay. I use that for all the shorts. That's that's the main tool, both oh, wow. filming and editing when I'm uh, doing the paper stuff. But now we have a David's camera turned on, and we use that for long format videos and some yeah, shorts where we appear. For long is, format videos, okay. we use uh, the Sony FX3 uh, with just a Rode microphone on top. Um, okay. Yeah, mainly that's that's uh, what we go around. And the voice is recorded on uh, this Shores microphone. SMB7, yeah. which is uh, my baby. So I love it so much, man. <laughs> I had for a long time uh, Sa oh. Samson's uh, USB uh, microphone, which I had to denoise the hell out of in, in FL Studio <laughs> because it's a nice, it's a decent microphone. But uh, the difference between that and this is a like night and an astronomically different celestial day. It's so like, because right. it's, yeah, it's an industry standard. All podcast, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, whatever podcasts use this from, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not necessary. It's not like if no, they. It's if, not. Yeah, if people want to start off to be a kind, you don't have to buy this. This is like I have to right. sa save up a lot of money to buy this. Yeah, I think it costs yes. now. It might cost less, but at the time it cost like six hundred dollars or something. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I had to make a few commissions to to, to get this. <laughs> but yeah, it's enough to have like a phone. Uh, just Do you as... edit everything on your phone. Yeah, CapCut. Oh my God. It's, oh it's... wow. Yeah, it's fantastic for it's them. It's very easy to yeah, manage. And I mean, it's so user friendly. Even if I were to film like a, some sort of a like a horizontal formatted, like a YouTube video on on iPhone, like you know that campaign that they had, like filmed on iPhone, and that's no joke. Like you can actually make like decently looking videos yeah. if you utilize the camera properties properly, and if you edit use that software. Maybe there are some others. But yeah, well, nowadays you can just mount uh, like a uh, manual uh, lenses on cameras. Also, I mean, there's like so this. many like attachments. But yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I'm, but uh, I'm curious, uh, what kind of camera do you use? Yes, um, I use this is Sony A7 III. Hmm. Oh, okay. Um, which is uh, hybrid. It's basically is... yeah, it's the same thing as FX3, but just different bodies. FX3 is more for video. Yeah, but right. you said A7S3? A7, no, A7 III. Not oh, A7 III, yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's more for, yeah, you can also use it for photography and mm -hmm. whatnot, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm also a photographer, so. Um, but I'm saving up for just an, a video um, camera. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. Do you think to step into cinema, cinema cameras or still? I was thinking of doing that, yeah. Which camera are you thinking. aiming at? The S3 looks is good, I would say. The A7S3, um, and I, I, more than that, ah, it's a bit excessive. But I, if I, maybe if I want to make films, because mm. um, I've used a lot of different, like I've used the FX9, I've used the FX6, I've used uh, um, the FX3 as well. Yeah. But I, that's overkill. <laughs> I don't need that much, yeah. you know, to to. To make well, the price of F FX3 and uh, S3 uh, is almost similar. There's, I think, like four hundred dollar difference. Yeah. But uh, it's uh, I don't know if you've heard, but the new movie that came out, The Creator. Uh, yeah, I heard. Was with the FX3, was it? Yeah, it was filmed with the FX3 camera, yeah. which is insane. I, Eighty million dollar budget movie just yeah. decided to do that. So it, it heard, just yeah. proves uh, the concept that you don't really need like a extremely like a RELX. If or... it's decent enough, seriously, like if it's good enough. Yeah. Like, even this, my camera, like this one is, you can make whatever film, seriously. Like it shouldn't really limit. Because again, like nowadays cameras like can do so much. Yeah. yeah. Even with, uh, with the iPhone, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? So, yeah. yeah. True, it shouldn't true. be something that should limit you in terms of what you're able to create. I think I've noticed yeah. you've been using a, a DJI microphone. Oh, yeah, I use that. That's uh, yeah. DJI. 
I was curious, awesome. uh, do you enjoy the quality of it? I got this. Mm. Do you know oh, the Osmo, yes. the Osmo Pocket 3? Nice, I nice. Got this, I got this to vlog, because uh, uh, to to use that, to use my camera to vlog all the time, it's... It's horrible. It's no, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And as a content creator, to make your life a bit easier, it's, it's yeah, it's... The, <laughs> you need to make things a bit easier in terms of the process. Uh, except if you have somebody who helps film your videos, but if you don't... Yeah. Seriously. Like, the easier, the better. You know, I'm the kind of person who likes to make things perfect, in a way. Like, also have control of everything. Like, all the settings of the camera, you know, the... But, uh, yeah, I need to start not worrying about that m now because I need to prioritize, like, you know, the the whole process um, and making things a bit easier for myself. But, yeah, that's why I got this. And, yeah, I also have the, the DJI mics. This one comes with the, with the love mic, the DJI love mic. Hmm. And I've got to others but yeah is it comfortable enough like uh during walking or anything uh does it stay strong yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Nice. it's uh it's kind of like a hook like a thing yeah, yeah, yeah. nice and then it also has a, a magnet in case you want to oh. put it here maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then put it at the back but you gotta be a bit more careful with with that mm -hmm. yeah it might fall but still it's good enough i don't have much else really oh in terms of lighting well uh, do you do it is the simplest light, seriously. I'm I'm trying to invest in good lighting. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. this is like this the most basic, uh, kind of like what do you call it? Soft box. It's just a bulb, a soft box. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a bulb in there, <laughs> and I can't control the intensity or the white ah. balance. Nothing. It is literally the most basic thing, and it is so cheap, but yeah, light is expensive. <laughs> Light is extremely expensive, expensive especially yeah. especially if you want to get good ones mm -hmm. like the aperture lights uh, yeah, oh god uh, yeah no those it's, are it's crazy expensive i'll get i'll get it i'll get some soon but for now this will do <laughs> <It's good laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 abdul i've been using this philips led panel that isn't even supposed <laughs> to be like like a film <laughs> equipment it's probably like you have to install it's like it. a type of pound now you equip uh, like in the like ceiling. in office buildings yeah or yeah, something yeah, yeah. Oh, where wow. it's cheap as heck and uh, you uh, yeah. I'm, uh, you can also use it to like trace uh, like to make like paper animations it, it's like you know if you put one paper over another, over other if, if 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 i want to do that it's also possible how long have you been drawing just because I'm, I'm sure most of my audience is drawing and mm -hmm. i know we want to talk about you know filmmaking and stuff but <laughs> most people are interested in the art side of things yeah, yeah. so for sure uh, for example like how long have uh so so has have you been drawing Oh, well, <laughs> technically, since uh, I was five months old, my, oh, okay. I was, yeah, I was basically born into a studio, essentially. My father, uh, our father is a painter. Uh, our mom studied uh, interior design, not, not, well, first she studied uh, art history and then interior design, but basically, yeah, all like pencils, paints, whatever, random pieces of paper were all around and... I don't know what urged me at that age, but my parents literally took one of my scribbles. It, the first drawing that I made was a smiley face, and my dad took it to a, like a, a doctor and he showed it to him. Like, <laughs> my like five month year old kid is able to do this, and like the doctor was like, "No, that's that's impossible. Kid, kids don't form memories when they're like like uh, at that age. Like how? But since then, and I have like a thanks to my parents, they. Uh, stockpiled all these like childhood scribbles i remember when i watched for the first time i think it was a year old or a year and a half old i watched the pinocchio uh, by disney and i remember mm -hmm. like it made such a huge impression on me this, especially the scene where the whale uh, swallows the giuseppe that mm -hmm. aggressive like breathing and spewing of the water and i have like series of that <laughs> So, yeah, like, since then, I had yeah, many issues with where uh, my teachers, like, reconciled with the fact, like, they just they let me d draw during the class. I, I was, like, okay. I, you could not stop me. Like, I, I was, they even compromised, and we made, like, a short about it, like, an animation short where... Uh, they said, okay, so, so you can draw, but due to how the uh, notebooks were, they had like a side panel, like, you know, squared uh, notebooks and uh, lined notebooks usually had like a red line 
leaving a little mm -hmm. bit of space on the side. You can draw in this side, but just leave the working area like uh, empty. <laughs> so yeah, since mm -hmm. then, yeah, essentially this that's like. Okay. And what was your also... ultimate like goal? What do you want to be in the future? Like right now is uh, I... uh, yeah. At, back then, like I, I just since I was drawing, I had like a vague idea of I want to be an artist. I want to be a, a drawer, mm -hmm. so to say. I was looking at my dad him being able to make a living out of it as well. Although he was also was a graphic designer in parallel, but he had like 14 uh, uh, individual exhibitions at that time made. And through then my adolescence moving through design and then our architecture and now finally back arriving back to drawing, I, I kind of want to do, I want to become an artist that is free in terms of making a, any sort of like art project, if, whether it's an installation, whether it's land art, whether okay. it's uh, yeah like a sculpture, or whether it's a, like a specific space that I exhibit, not a, not like singular pieces of work, but just like an entire space I design in such a way that a person walks through is like an experience, like an exhibition, mm -hmm. like purposely designed, like a, I don't know, like an architectural structure or something. Yeah. So yeah, like so someone who is capable to to have that sort of freedom, because I look at people like Ai mm -hmm. Weiwei, or like nowadays, like the the contemporary artist nowadays is so out of the box of like what seems to be considered like a standard like artist who stands in front of an easel and with a paintbrush mm -hmm. and a you know palette. Now you can like fill an entire like a what is it like Anish Kapoor like filled a huge like French uh, glass uh, structure I forgot the name of it like the Crystal Palace I believe like with a huge inflated piece it's a weird piece but huh? he can he do it because he can and I kind of want to like hopefully get to that point like where like I I, I, I do it because I can what about you David what's your ultimate no uh, it's uh, well, the maybe the most ultimate is uh, directing uh, and that takes time and experience so I don't imagine doing that until I'm like 40 maybe because at that point uh, that whole process will take like uh, networking, like finding people, doing different kind of projects to achieve to that point until you make like your personal individual um, movie because you don't want to just like mm -hmm. agree to some random type of movie where producers will kind of do mm -hmm. whatever they want and like disallow you to uh, kind of become a, uh, have like creative freedom over it. So probably mm -hmm. that, but uh, there are just so many projects, like side projects that uh, I feel I really want to do. And one of them is uh, also like um, creating a school, like uh, not just art school in general, but uh, uh, like a small program school that wouldn't require students to stay there for four years and not do anything else, but like maybe just a one year project uh, type of thing. Because that... that okay that sort of environment needs to like be created by someone who can like guarantee kids a short amount of time, a good amount of information and some kind of like, guarantee that after that they would be able to go somewhere. And so this sort of a program mm -hmm. would need uh, like people who could guarantee that. And like if in future okay. uh, we manage to succeed to a point where we can guarantee to kids who like go through this process, uh, at least to send them for like uh, some kind of like exchange program, yeah, you know, internships, uh, yeah, internships or stuff like that. That would be also very nice because that we definitely lack mm -hmm. that in uh, in Georgia. So that yeah. would be pretty nice. And That's yeah, nice. there are just uh, tons and tons of projects that uh, like what Soso was saying. Exhibitions are also so many ideas can be created yeah. in that way. But content creation, I think, is the best gateway to whatever it is that you guys want to make. And I think. It's definitely open doors for, for you yeah. guys to, for sure, for to sure. be able to achieve that. So, well, right now we're that's, definitely that's... focusing on this to to create. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's gonna nice... keep opening doors. Who knows? Yeah, like yeah. how it's just a matter of like uh, us not stopping here, <laughs> literally, and mm -hmm. keep keeping keep going and uh, yeah, th taking as many opportunities yeah, yeah. Uh, that that are exciting and interesting and new and broaden our horizons as possible. That that is mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. is the goal. Well, honestly, um, this whole conversation was very, very nice. <laughs> it's just so nice yeah, to like was... meet someone who is also kind of like similarly finding its path and mm -hmm. figuring things out. It's it's just a great experience. Yeah. But yeah, thank you guys so much for for doing this. Um, I I like to kind of meet new audiences. And, I mean, new new creators, and interact and just overall get to know each other. And I feel like it's also important to kind of 
put yourself out there and you know contact people because um yeah i i do it a lot and i love to to talk with other people and yeah. But yeah, yeah, no. Thank you, thank you for reaching out and uh, for this whole experience. It's been yeah. really thank nice. Thank you for and, accepting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, Glad to, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that was the podcast, and hopefully you enjoyed. I love talking to people. Let me know who else you might want me to talk to, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.